You see these? These are acoustic panels, and their job is to absorb sound waves. You put them on the wall of a room, and they dramatically reduce the amount of echo and reverb that you get in that space. They are kind of similar to the sound diffusion panel that I made a couple months ago, but they function a little bit differently. These are probably one of the best ways that you can treat a room so that you can get good, clean sound recordings in them. And that's why you always see them in the backgrounds of so many YouTubers and Twitch streamers. But as far as I'm concerned, these things have one fatal flaw. I think they look really ugly and I don't want them in the backgrounds of any of my shots. So today we're going to be making some good looking acoustic panels and we're going to be making them out of a material that I don't think I've ever seen anybody make acoustic panels out of before. But before we do that, I should tell you about the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can learn directly from creative professionals working in the field. I've recently been taking Scott Liu's course on enhancing voiceover audio in Adobe Audition and I've learned so much. He taught me the basics of compression, EQing, and just generally cleaning up my audio so that it sounds better for you guys. And I thought it was fitting because today's video is all about room acoustics, which Scott also covers in his course. Skillshare members have unlimited access to a wide range of classes on all sorts to different subjects from photography straight through to logo design and it's all completely ad free. It's a great service, I've been enjoying it a lot and I think you will too. Right now Skillshare has a special offer for my viewers, the first 1000 people to register with the link in the video description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. Alright, let's head to the shop and get started on this build. Now that we're here in the shop, let's talk about all the materials that we're gonna need for this build. And I think the first one we should address is this big giant green sheet behind me. This is Sonopan and it's kind of my secret weapon on this build. So traditionally these sound absorbing panels are made with rock wool insulation, but I have a feeling that this might perform a little bit better. And actually it's kind of funny, when I first saw this stuff, I just assumed because of its green color that it was also made of rock wool. But as it turns out, I actually just looked this up. It's made from wood fibers and then a bunch of organic binders. So officially Sonopan is designed as a soundproofing material that you put in your home. You put it between your studs and your drywall and it absorbs sound waves from passing between rooms. So I am technically going off label here, but I figure it's a material that's designed to absorb sound waves. So I think it should work in this application too. And here's the thing, I've used traditional mineral wool as sound insulation in homes and it doesn't work that well. And I've also been to some trade shows where they've had demos of Sonopan up and it worked really well. So I have a hunch that this might actually work a little bit better than mineral wool, but that remains to be seen. Quick shout out to my buddy Mark at Remarkable Woodworks. He told me that the best way to cut Sonopan is with a track saw. So that's what we're gonna do. We are going to cut this thing up into some smaller panels. As much as I'd love to hang full sheets of this stuff up on the wall, I don't think that would look particularly great. So I set about subdividing my four by eight sheets into some smaller pieces. If you don't happen to have a track saw, you could easily cut this stuff with a circular saw, jigsaw, or even a pull saw if you had all the time in the world. It's not very dense, so it cuts easy and quick. But for my build, cutting nice straight lines would make some of the later steps a lot easier, so the track saw was definitely hard to beat. Another reason that I picked Sonopan for this build is because of its thin profile. Rock wool is usually like three or four inches thick, whereas Sonopan is three quarters of an inch thick. So this meant that I could make acoustic panels that wouldn't stick off the wall nearly as much. All right, so that is a total of eight panels for four sound traps. I'm actually gonna double up these panels in each uh, individual trap. So the next thing we gotta do is make some frames to put them in, and in order to do that, I'm just going to use some very basic two by fours. Nothing fancy here. First thing I did was rip my two by fours in half. Sure, I could have just bought two by twos at the store, but I need these frames to be relatively straight and square, and it is really hard to find decently straight two by twos. So ripping two by fours in half seemed like a much better option. Then, after that, it was all about cutting them to length on the miter saw. Seeing as I worked out all my frame sizes ahead of time, I was basically just working my way down a cut sheet, which was a little bit boring, but I kept myself entertained by trying to hit three pointers with all of the off cuts. Kobe. All right, now that we got all these guys cut, we can start putting together our frames, and that will actually give me a good opportunity to test out these corner clamps that I bought a few months ago and haven't really found a use for yet. 
Let's see if these work. I would love to tell you that I had some super cool pro method for attaching these miters together, but really it was just about as basic as you could get. I applied some wood glue to both sides of the miter, clamped them in position, and then screwed everything together with some three inch construction screws. However, if you would like to see a cool technique for joining miters together, you should probably check out my patio chair build, which I will link at the top of the screen right now. I went a bit above and beyond for that one. One frame down, three more to go. Before we go any further, I gotta express I'm a little disappointed with these corner clamps. I thought they would do a better job of pressing the miter together, but really they just kind of hold things in place, which is handy, but they're just not the corner clamps I thought they were. So it's hard to get too mad because I did only spend about 15 bucks on that pair of these. So yeah, I guess you get what you pay for. All right, let's keep going. When I was trying to figure out how big to make these frames, I was basically just balancing two priorities, form and function. When you're trying to combat reverb and echo in a room, the more surface area you can cover with your acoustic panels, the better. But I also didn't want to make these panels so big that they overpower the space. So my compromise was to make four frames that were approximately two feet wide by four feet tall. Once I was done, I set three of them aside and laid out the last one for a little bit of special treatment. All right, that is our last frame done. Now this frame is not quite like the other three. Because of where it's gonna go, I have a very special mounting solution for it. We are gonna mount this one with magnets. So let's drill some holes to mount these on. Using a Forstner bit on my drill, I was able to carve out some recessed pockets in the frame and let the magnets sit nice and flush for a clean, minimalist look. This particular panel is going to sit over top of a big HVAC unit in my office, and I still need to be able to access it from time to time to replace filters, do any repairs, and stuff like that. So the magnets seem like a great, non-permanent way to mount it in place. Also, I know it's silly, but I do love to incorporate magnets whenever possible into my projects. Magnets are done. Frames are done. I think we now get to do the fun part of this job and see if our sono pan fits into these frames. Let's see, let's see, let's see. And yeah, they're too big. I actually kind of realized I made this mistake a while ago when I was cutting the frames. What I did was I made these panels big enough for the outside dimension of the frame, not the inside dimension of the frame. Honestly, pretty easy mistake to make and one that I make on a semi-regular basis. So I'm not too worried about it. Better to be too big rather than too small. In order to fix this, we're just gonna cut these guys down to size over on the table saw. Technically, you could add table saw to that list of tools for cutting sono pan from earlier, but be warned, it's never a great idea to push big sheets of anything through a table saw. It's awkward, they can bind up on you, and it's a great way to have whatever you're cutting thrown back in your face by the saw. Thankfully though, at this point, I was working with much smaller pieces of sono pan, so this felt very comfortable and safe. Oh, and while I was on my way back from the table saw, I noticed that the corners of my frames were a bit sharp looking, so I took the opportunity to round them over using the trim router. I know this seems like an inane detail, but trust me, it'll be helpful later on. Let's try this whole thing again now, okay? Ooh, oh yeah, that's gonna go. Look at that. Nice, tight fit. Perfect, number one's good. How about number two? Yep, yep, yep. Perfect friction fit. Love it. Next up, get this one out of the way. I do two at the same time, do I dare? Yep, yep. These ones go in here. Fantastic, last one. This one's really tight. Oh, that might be the tightest fit of all. Okay. That's four frames, all done. Now at this point, you may very well be asking yourself, how are these panels any better looking than the ones you showed us at the start of the video? That's a fair question, but don't worry, we got another step left to do. We are going to stretch some fabric over our panels to make them look a little bit nicer. I went to a local fabric store, I got some nice bluey gray fabric that's a little bit sheer so that you can see through it. And the idea there is that the sheer of the fabric is the more sound waves it'll let transmit through it, although, Looking at this now, I might have gone a little bit too sheer. I can really see through this. So I'm worried it's not gonna cover up uh, the actual panels, like the difference in color between the wood and the sono pan. But 
If that's the case, I'll just double it up. This fabric was actually super cheap too. I think it was like $4 a yard. I actually wanted to get a fabric with like a printed texture on it or some sort of textile with an interesting texture to it. But that was surprisingly hard to find anything that I like. So in the end, I just ended up going with this, which is nice and neutral. And I think it'll play well with all the walnut that I have in my office. Again, if you were hoping to see some sort of fancy mounting system, you might be watching the wrong video. To attach the fabric to the frame, I simply stapled it in place. Or at least I thought it was going to be simple. To be honest, it was a little tough to get the fabric stretched perfectly over the frames so that there were no wrinkles or bunches. And the corners? Ugh, don't even get me started on the corners. As someone who's never been particularly great at wrapping presents, I struggled with this part the most. Anyways, after a little bit of fussing and a lot of swearing, I finally got the first layer of fabric onto the panels. I was curious to see if the fabric was too sheer, so I lifted up one corner and, well, maybe it's best if I just show you. When I stand it up like this, you can get a pretty good idea of why I want to do two layers of the fabric. You can see it's actually pretty good through the middle here, but around the perimeter where the wood is, you can see a lot of the wood bleeding through. So two layers it was. Unfortunately, since I didn't account for having to double up the fabric and also just because I'm bad at estimating, I had to make three separate trips to the fabric store that day. But hey, by the end of the day, I was at least on a pretty friendly basis with the older woman who ran the store. So that was kind of nice, I guess. You know, originally my plan was to trim off all this excess fabric around the edges, but now that it's on there, I'm realizing it's doing a really good job of keeping the sono pan secure in the frames. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'll staple it down, make it look nice, and it's gonna be on the backside anyways. All right, let's flip this guy over and see how he looks with two layers of fabric on him. Oh, that is much, much better. I can't even see the wood anymore. All right, now let's do the other three panels. Thankfully, by the time I got to the second, third, and fourth panels, I had honed my fabric wrapping abilities and they all went a lot quicker. Thirty minutes later, I had all four panels double wrapped in fabric, and I was just about ready to go, but I had one little thing left to do. Me? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just doing the incredibly normal job of ironing my sound panels. There's a couple of wrinkles in the fabric that I wanted to take care of. Nothing to see here. I did my best to stretch all the wrinkles out of the fabric, but in the end there were still a few, and this iron that I normally use in the shop to attach edge banding did a really good job of removing them. Now that we're done with this little bonus step, I think we are ready to take these panels home and answer the most important question of this video. Will Sonopan perform in this application? Let's go find out. All right, now that we are home with all the panels, obviously the first thing that we have to do is mount them all around the room, and then I wanna run some tests. We'll record a couple test sentences into this microphone right here with all the panels up. Then I'll take all the panels down, we'll record a couple more test sentences and see if we can hear a difference. Mounting these panels should be really straightforward, especially this magnetic one. I'll just lift it up and place it over top of this metal HVAC cover. So this is a big win for me because I have always hated how this cover looks. It's big, it's white, it's annoying looking. This, I think, looks much better. Although this panel did get roughed up a little bit in transport, I might have to steam it to remove some of these wrinkles. And then all the other panels I will mount in place just using these little French cleat clips. Don't worry, I won't bore you with too many mounting details because this whole thing was pretty straightforward. I attached one side of the cleat to the panels, located the other half of the cleat on the wall, which was thankfully very easy to mount just using drywall plugs because the panels themselves aren't very heavy, and then I lifted the panels into place. Rinse and repeat three times for three non-magnetic panels, and I was done. There we go, we now have 360 degrees of sound absorption in this room. So I'm gonna clean up the mess in here and then we are gonna run some tests. Okay, I got the Premiere project file open and we are ready to do some test recordings. So I'm gonna start with a couple sentences and then even do a little bit of clapping too. Three, two, one. This is a test recording with the sound panels up on the wall. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Now, let's take these all down. Well, I want the stuck on there. What do you think? Should I take down the sound diffusion panels too? I think I should. We'll do all the sound treatment all at once. Yeah, there it is. Finally, the last one behind the camera. All right, there we go. 
Okay, let's see how that, oh wow. I can already hear a difference with my ears, but let's, uh, let's do a more objective test. Test two. This is a test with no sound diffusion and no sound isolation panels. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Just from what I can hear, this is a huge difference and I would be shocked if this doesn't show up on the recording, but let's see. So here's the test setup. The pink clips down here are the ones with sound treatment up on the walls and then the green clips beside them there are the ones with no sound treatment up on the wall. We're gonna play them back to back and see if we can hear a difference. This is a test recording with the sound panels up on the wall. This is a test with no sound diffusion and no sound isolation panels. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So what do you think? Can you hear a difference? Personally, I can hear a rather large difference. I think the recordings with the panels up are cleaner, crisper, and just overall easier to listen to. True, it's not completely revolutionary or game changing, but I think it should really improve the quality of the voiceovers in my videos. And honestly, I should really be recording my voiceovers with the blinds on my windows down because those big windows are creating a ton of reverb, but I wanted the light for recording this video. So my future voiceovers should sound even better than those test clips because I'll do those with the blinds down. I also really like how these panels look. I think the blue color ties in really nicely with some of the wood tones and the other colors in here. And honestly, they just make the space feel a lot more professional than it really is. I kind of thought I was gonna regret going with such a simple color, but now that they're up, I'm really happy. And if you disagree and you wanna do something a little bit more adventurous, all you would have to do is just pick a different fabric at the fabric store. And also, I think that we just proved that, yes, in fact, you can use Sonopan to create acoustic panels. I guess the only question that remains unanswered at this point is how does Sonopan compare to traditional rock wool insulation? So if you would like to see that comparison, just let me know down in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll go buy a bundle of it and put up a quick YouTube short comparing the two. But here's the thing. Even if the mineral wool did perform a little bit better than the Sonopan, I still think for my money, I would go the Sonopan route. Because it's so thin, these panels barely stick off the wall. And because it's rigid, it was a lot easier to work with and then fit into these frames. And it's also just a lot nicer to work with. I can't go anywhere near rock wool without feeling crazy itchy all over my body. And the dust from it, even if you're wearing a mask, is like a magnet for the back of your throat. And oh, I just hate working with it. And on top of all that, check it out. New filling angle, right? I kind of like it. Although I guess I do kind of need a light over in that corner to balance things out, but overall, very happy. And on that note, I think this is the perfect spot to end this video. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe if you aren't already. I would personally appreciate it, and it helps my videos to reach a wider audience. Big thank you to all my Patreon supporters who you can see listed here and here. My patrons got early access to this video as well as a whole bunch of bonus content. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, I'll include a link in the video description. All right, that's it for me, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.